Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Wednesday, February the 6th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. DwyerSportsBetting.com, a free site. DwyerSportsBetting.com is also BettingAngle.us. Let's talk basketball, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, the news is breaking that the Philadelphia 76ers have just picked up Tobias Harris. And they didn't have to trade Jimmy Butler, Ben Simmons, or Joel Embiid to get him. Right? Simply put, this trade is a game changer. Understand, Tobias Harris is one of the better players in the league. Did you know that this young man hits 43% of his threes? I'm just telling you, and I've watched the Clippers, I've bet on the Clippers, uh, Harris at times was carrying that team this year. Right? He's not one of the better known names in the league. We don't think of him the way we think of other big players. But this guy is a big player, and he is exactly what the Philadelphia 76ers need. So this morning, there's a play that I think you want to take a hard look at. It's the NBA Futures, right? The line hasn't completely adjusted yet. You can get the Philadelphia 76ers simply to win the Eastern Conference. Right? Not the NBA championship, just the Eastern Conference at a plus 350. Right? A plus 350. I think that's the play to make today. I believe you need to make it soon. Because sooner or later, people are going to look hard at that East. Let's talk about the teams above the 76ers in the East. Right? There are four of them. Understand, one of the teams, the Indiana Pacers, the team that just demolished the Lakers, right? Who, let's face it, are poorly put together and are not all that, right? Just understand that Indiana lost Victor Oladipo, their best player, right? Oladipo, quite frankly, in my mind, is an MVP candidate. Right? He's out for the year. You lose a player of that magnitude, and you're not going to be able to win the conference. I don't care what Indiana does. They have a great fan base. They certainly were having a great season. Right? The bottom line is Indiana shouldn't be ranked ahead of the Philadelphia 76ers. Right? Let's talk about some of these other teams. The Toronto Raptors. Folks, the Toronto Raptors, with Kawhi Leonard, with Green, with the guys they have, don't have the talent that the Philadelphia 76ers do. Tobias Harris is also averaging around 20 points a game. You're adding him with Butler, who's gifted defensively. You're adding him to Ben Simmons, one of the premier triple-double threats in the league. And understand, Simmons gets his triple-doubles in a way Russell Westbrook doesn't. Right? Westbrook's taking a lot of shots and doing a lot of things that, in my opinion, don't contribute to the team's bottom line. Ben Simmons gets his triple-doubles in the flow of the game. That Philadelphia starting four, quite frankly, really is one of the very best in the league. The Milwaukee Bucks have nothing like it. Toronto, nothing like it. Let's talk about the Boston Celtics. You know, the Boston Celtics made a deal with the devil. That's becoming more apparent to Celtic fans every day, right? They have Kyrie Irving on the team. Now, Kyrie certainly is a gamer, 
I watched Kyrie carry Cleveland at times, even with LeBron James on the team. Cleveland doesn't beat the Warriors in that NBA championship if Kyrie Irving didn't hit multiple big shots in that game. Right, Kyrie is a great player when he, ha when he has his head on straight. But let me just say this. There are issues there. Right, Kyrie in a situation that many would call one of abundance. Right, let's think about what the city of Boston's been doing. Right, spectacular sports culture. They just won the World Series. They just won the NFL championship. The team last year got to the conference finals. The team's been drafting people like Jason Tatum. Right, Danny Ainge has done a spectacular job in the draft. Right, Jalen Brown. Now, given all that's happened in Boston, a lot of players, if they were Celtics, would consider themselves lucky. You're on one of the few teams in the entire NBA that has a legitimate shot at a conference championship. Right? Understand, there are guys on teams like the Knicks, the Bulls, the Cavs, who know they have no shot at winning the conference. Right? None. On the Celtics, you have a shot. You're also in a salary cap league. Players can't even feel underappreciated if the team's willing to offer you the max. Right? You can't say, hey, why aren't you offering me top dollar? The team can say, talk to your union. We are offering you top dollar. So think about Kyrie Irving here. It's at this point, in early February, right, when many teams are thinking about that playoff run, thinking about life after the All-Star break looking around the league and thinking to themselves, okay, the Bulls, Cavs, and Knicks are out of it. Who are the teams in it? We're one of them. How can we do better than last year? Let's remember, Celtics get to a Game 7 at home in the conference finals. Right? Kyrie was hurt at the time. So, of course, what better time than now for Kyrie Irving to suddenly start sounding non-committal about re-signing with the Celtics. What better time than now for Kyrie to get upset because others, not team management, but others are speculating about him joining other superstars, KD for example, with the New York Knicks. Right? My point to you is this, a guy can have a great game, but if the guy's a flake, let's just be as blunt as possible here, right? If the guy is a flake and if there's a high variance in the guy's game, in other words, you know, you're playing with the guy and the guy's doing certain things to cause waves in the locker room to cause waves at the press conference. In other words, you could imagine Al Horford or, you know, Morris or Jalen Brown is talking to the Boston press. Pretty tough press score. And rather than be asked about the next game, the next opponent, they're being asked about Kyrie Irving's comments. Folks, to me, that's destabilizing. Right? That's that's not a team in an optimal environment. This is with a great fan base and stuff like that. Let me also say too, my own opinion as a gambler, I know the stats don't back me up, but you have to go by your eyes. This is a Malcolm Gladwell thing, right? You know when something just seems to work better. In my opinion, Terry Rozier, the backup point guard, leads that team better than Kyrie Irving does. Irving has the better numbers. Irving, for some reason, the man who the head coach believes is the best passer on the team. 
doesn't like to pass the ball that much. Right? He He's not averaging 9 or 10 assists a game. That's just not his DNA. He needs to score. Now you have a team where certain guys have certain skills. Take a look at Morris's three-point capability. Right? Take a look at Al Horford's three-point capability. And remember, Horford's a center. Now this is a team that, in my opinion, a real point guard, a pure point guard, a Jason Kidd, a guy who was able to maximize his teammates' production, augment it, right? As I see it, there they were always two sets of stats, right? What the player would do with Jason Kidd and what the player would do without Jason Kidd, right? A Jason Kidd in Boston, wow, it would be Christmas, right? A real point guard in Boston looking at that team, looking at that team both offensively and defensively. Magic Johnson, dare I say it, prime Magic Johnson with the Celtics, my God, right? The guy would know, gee, Al Horford's out at three-point range is something a defender won't be able to deal with. Right? These guys playing center aren't accustomed to guarding centers who can hit threes. So a guy like Magic would understand just the threat of Al Horford out by three is going to open the lane. So on a fast break, a Magic would know, okay, Jalen Brown cutting down the lane, I could hit him. Or I could hit Horford out by three. Or I could hit Morris out by three. Hell, I could even hit bad shooting Marcus Smart out by three. That's not the way Kyrie Irving thinks. Right, so, I feel all the teams at the top of the Eastern Conference are vulnerable. Indy because of injury. Milwaukee and Toronto because they just don't have the firepower on the roster. Boston because of dysfunction. Right? Because you have a superstar there who's a prima donna. So if Tobias Harris, who's a team player, who quite frankly is one of the league's most underrated players, can find a way to fit in with Butler, Simmons, and Embiid. Understand you're getting better than three to one odds on this team to just win the conference. Let me go further too. You know the way hedging works. So if Philly gets to the conference finals, think about it. If they just get to the conference finals, you can hedge the play. Right? Because you're getting a plus 350. Right? You can hedge the play so you'll be able to win if either team wins the Eastern Conference Finals. Right? Think it through. Let me point out to the obvious. Without Tobias Harris, Philly's 34 and 20. Boston is 35 and 19. Boston's only one game better than Philly right now. And that's without Tobias Harris. Right? Let's also state the obvious too. Toronto and Milwaukee both haven't had a lot of success in the playoffs recently. Right? You're not talking about a team like the New England Patriots in your conference. A team where you're in the playoffs and you know these guys have been there, done that, are experienced. You're in the conference finals, you know these guys have more experience in the conference finals than you do. Uh, they're experienced, right? You don't have that in the East. You don't. 
So to me, Philly at plus 350 is a bet that makes itself. You have an opportunity this morning. You want to grab it before the world figures out that Boston, with whom you're getting much shorter odds, is only one game better than Philly right now. Right? Think about it. Right now. And Philly has had major transition points. Right? That, you know, Butler deal, there's been a period of adjustment there, hasn't there? Right? That first pick of the draft, he's still working through some issues, hasn't he? The season hasn't been a dream season for Philly. And yet they practically have the same record as the Boston Celtics. And they've just picked up a 20 point per game guy. 20 point per game guy who this year is hitting better than 43% of his threes and who has a history, several seasons, several, with an effective field goal rate of better than 50%. Keep an eye on Tobias Harris and the Philadelphia 76ers. At a plus 350, this is a gift. I'll just tell you, I'm taking it this morning right I think it's worth a look that's how I see it let me hear from you if you take exception to anything I've said if you feel Kawhi Leonard who was hurt last year folks he goes down what happens to Toronto right Kyle Lowry is looking a little bit older these days isn't he if you feel that the Toronto Raptors, the Milwaukee Bucks, hell, the Indiana Pacers, or the Boston Celtics are a lock to win the Eastern Conference, then I hope you leave those comments in the comment section of this video. Right? Tell us why I'll also agree. For those of you looking ahead, right, I'm expecting Indy to fade a bit now that Oladipo is out. So I'm not expecting Philly to have to play Boston in the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Right? I believe it's a little bit early too. I don't expect the Milwaukee Bucks to continue their current pace. Right? Giannis has to slow down in my opinion. So I'm expecting the pecking order to change a bit. I'll agree. If Philly has to play Boston, those are the two best teams, in my opinion, in the East. Before the Eastern Conference Finals, then you need to consider some hedges in that series. Right? You need to consider covering yourself in that series. Right? But right now, the plus 350, in my opinion, is simply a gift. I'm expecting the playoffs to work out where both Boston and Philly rise in the rankings. I wouldn't even be surprised if Philly doesn't end up with a better record than Boston, right? Because Gordon Hayward, his minutes, let's say Boston's working out a bunch of things. Brad Stevens right now is working out a bunch of things. I definitely see an opening right here for the Philadelphia 76ers. The fact that the casino is giving you longer odds than you're getting with Milwaukee, Toronto, or Boston to me is a casino mispricing. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.